Noir Vortex here and welcome to the first Funny Philosophy for a fair few months. Funny Philosophy, if you've never watched Funny Philosophy before, is a show where I talk as much as I can do to camera for 20 minutes and usually not going over that about a certain subject. So the subject for today is future, the future, futurism and any topic that comes out of that kind of exploration of the future. So start with the obvious stuff. The future is a, what not define the future? It's a concept, it's a property of time, i.e. a future moment somewhere forward a forward sort of tunnel of vision I would imagine it as like a sort of tunnel in the future as opposed to the present which I would imagine as a sort of ever present kind of tube and the past is a sort of wall that you can drag or a well that you can get dragged down to kind of use a philosophical, to philosophical metaphor I suppose I was going to talk about <clears throat> different states of time past present future so the future is always an imagined state a state of becoming I suppose whereas now is mm, now is a process the past is also a process but it's The past is what you measure up. The past, in a lot of ways, creates what you want your future to be. Because you, um, as an individual, I think you want to create your future based on uh, reflections on your past and how things have been in the past. But also, the future you want it to be different somehow, as a person, as a thinking, feeling, emotional blob, as we are as human beings. Um, so that is how I see the concept of the future and the actual, in terms of it being a physical thing, in terms of it, physics, I suppose, or our understanding of science and physics, and from a philosophical kind of consciousness level. Um, most of us talk about it from a consciousness sort of level, then, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I've got, I'll go on and on and on. So let's talk about how um, how is sort of I mean actually in terms of how t philosophy is dealt with time, that's not something I've got a great deal of knowledge about. Um, I do have some sort of like layman's knowledge of like f physics and how that deals with the question of time in terms of. Um, very vague notions of like relativity and Einstein's physics, and um, from reading like a Mishu Kaku book about ten years ago, <laughs> in general kind of thing. Um, I don't want to talk about it in that sense because I'm I'm got enough knowledge. I haven't got enough um, real authority to really talk about that type of physics-based time future thing great use of a language there for me <laughs> um, so what I'll do instead is um, I'm gonna, like I said talk about from, I'm kind of going very meta now I'm just going around in circles and like a lot of these if you've never seen any of these podcasts before basically half of it is me talking bollocks and half of it is me having a sort of revelation and then trying to make a joke out of it. <laughs> so yeah, the future is always a point of reference. Um, well, the point of reference is the past, I suppose. And as soon as you conceptualize of the future instantaneously, it kind of comes true, I suppose. It's always a sort of, um, if you wanted to say, like imagine your mind's like a, a palace of potential. For example, 
and the future is just uh, usually it's idealized but you're kind of trying to figure out something that you want to become really it's a becoming so uh, so for me for example if I were to say uh, but it's incredibly hard to define as well in some respects like um, this kind of relates to Tarkovsky's film The Zone uh, Stalker sorry which has this in that there's like a sort of weird metaphysical space called The Zone where people can go and uh, give their heart's desire and it would instantly come true as long as they could um, talk, just say what it was but when you actually unless you kind of analyse and reflect in a relatively deeply kind of meditative way I think in a lot of ways actually figuring out what that is is you do that in the moment or you do that in the, you mean you might have a goal for example, let's just break it down a bit might want to become something or be something. Say, like, I wanted to be a, I don't know, a drum and bass DJ. Which is apt since I'm listening to Source Direct and drum and bass. I guess that's where I came into mind. You want to like, have the mashing beats, you want to have the turntables, you want to really get into the music. It's sort of cool being a DJ. There's lots of very good reasons you might want to be one because you just love the music. It's cool, so you might get laid and shit. Blah, blah 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 these are all the things that might be bubbling under your head in the surface it's a sort of image of uh, I mean I'm being facetious and kind of stupid obviously but all those things in some way will be bubbling under the surface there's always a reason for what in the future uh, and then a lot of this is stating the obvious really of course um, in terms of the planet we sort of in a strange place in terms of what the future is going to be but it has always has ever been there so the future is always an unknown which is why it's exciting I guess so I mean part of the reason that the future remains an interesting prospect is because we know about the past it's joy it's pain it's suffering it's the future always seems like this kind of glistening orb in the distance where everything will be perfect and everything will come together in a kind of idealized click moment and those moments exist in one's life but usually it takes a lot of development in the now in the moment the ever-present now to develop yourself and to self-analyze on the level it's difficult because you have to process the past this kind of reminds me from the scene and a lot of, I think a lot of what I'm saying here is just sort of um, taking from this scene in the film called Naked by Mike Lee now it's not a porno or anything it's nothing dirty it's more referring to psychological nakedness really Mike Lee's Naked is a film about a drifting sort of unhinged uh, a maniac in a lot of ways called Johnny the Mancunian moves down to London well gets I won't get into the story too much but basically he's like a wandering homeless sort of almost existentialist anti-hero I suppose if I was going to put it anyway um, there's a scene in that where he talks to a security guard about the nature of time and what time is and it's a very interesting scene basically in that he talks about how there is no future um, everything is coming to being passing away, coming to being, coming passing away it's kind of a nihilistic outlook he has in the film of though you know there is no future everything's up he, he talks about, goes into the apocalypse and how an apocalypse is an evolutionary sort of leap from what we are now which is individual thinking sentient beings into some sort of godhead would be the best way to describe it I suppose now that's kind of like flaky language it doesn't really mean it when godhead can I know it means thing something but um, it's sort of one of those words where it's like 
It doesn't have a real concrete meaning to it, I suppose. Godhead. I mean, I imagine that just as a collective consciousness sort of union thing, I suppose. Um, yeah, so I'm going on that track now, I suppose, I'm in thought. And, I mean, the way I... I've already described the way I see it. I think it's something... Something that takes an amount, an awful amount of work to really bring into being, and I think the real trick in life, to bring it to a more philosophical level, is to bring to bring about the future you want. Is first you have to know your desire. You have to be able to articulate it in some fashion. Then you have to be able to work towards achieving that desire. And life being life, there will be unpredictable hurdles and joys and ebbs and flows as it proceeds and it never goes along the path you suspect it would do there's always the interesting parts of life are often the forks I suppose the unexpected forks and uh, I mean, it'll be boring if it's predictable um, you know we, we kind of take our sentient sort of reflective almost melancholic side as human beings for granted I think but it's uh, what makes life interesting? I think. I'm just going to drink progressively more beer and talk more bollocks. But, um, I'll have to talk about the future as a sort of group thing. So, I mean, if you look at something like 1984 by Orwell in that the whole idea is that he who controls the past controls the future and that if you control that whole idea of that was I guess controlling information to control the, the present or was it it wasn't yeah, I've completely said it wrong he who controls the past controls the future he who controls the past con he who controls the present controls the past I can't remember you know what I mean the Orwell 1984 quote which I've screwed up there, I've had a beer but basically in that I think it was like totalitarian societies which have existed in the world, I mean like in it wasn't written in a vacuum um, that kind of brings up the concept of information being a fundamental part of how we understand time which, so I guess to find that information, as far as I see it, is data, like raw data, if we use an analogy of a, um, information in its rawest form. And then information's usually got some depth to it, I suppose. <sighs> so where is it going with this? Um, knowledge is power obvious phrase to use at this point but I think in life if you want to manifest whatever you want to manifest you've got to figure out what your desire is so like for me what do I desire I'll try and just do this as a thought experiment now I suppose knowledge love um, truth meaning That's, those are the main things really, but the, the difficult part is always figuring out what those mean to you individually. So, you know, love could be relationships to others, but it could be something you love in your life, like something you love doing. Everyone you tends to have a, a key passion in their life, I suppose, that defines their future path and will, in one way or another, create it. So for me, for example, um, I love painting. I love the freedom of that. I love um, being able to just take one, take a pen for a walk and create a world in my own head that is then externalised. And I get a great deal of satisfaction from that. And that, across the course of my life, talking to my personal now, has created my life path. It's had costs. I'm not a rich man. Um, 
and I, I in a lot of ways I've got financial woes that I need to lift and I'm a cliched starving artist also a little tortured unfortunately um, but it's hard it's kind of hard to I mean these, these patterns come from somewhere cliches you know like I guess we're not going to answer that's tender too gentle um, but yeah whatever every decision you make has this like a equal and opposite reaction I suppose in a lot of ways not every decision but a lot of the most of the major one and like it's a constant weighing up between not being defined by your past not being shoehorned into what you think your future should be and riding the wave of the infinite now um, I realise I sound like a sort of new age one is annoying fucking new age guru sort of self help arseholes uh, what can you do it's kind of hard to I mean obviously I'm talking philosophies I'm talking kind of pretentious bullshit I'm sorry so yeah let's just talk, think about someone and just see if I can probe my brain for anything else um the film called Solaris, which I guess in a lot of ways relates very much to this, again, Tarkovsky, Russian filmmaker. In that film, um, it's all about moments in time, really. So it's more about the past, that film, and how that shapes our um, life, really, and our kind of experience of life. So in Solaris, there's a psychologist who visits this goes near this planet which basically brings back old memories so in his case he brings back his dead wife is a sort of ghost who gets resuscitated getting resuscitated so an old memory of uh, his wife who killed herself obviously I don't think I'm giving away too much spoiler alert late but. so this memory is a core aspect of how um, our idea of what the future could be is shaped in our minds. We make a lot of the same mistakes, like we tread a lot of familiar paths, but then sometimes it's very necessary to break from those paths as a sort of necessary thing to stay sane often, I think. <clears throat> like it's very easy to go insane if you always if especially if you the worst thing the thing you absolutely do not want in your life regardless of how much you might have to endure to get to wherever you want to be is to walk a path that you never wanted to tread in the first place I think there's some truth, depth of truth in those words I think certainly it's, uh, there's nothing worse than living someone else's life because that's uh, almost a Nietzschean thing really the kind of the idea of the Uber of create your own values and live your life as, as you want to live it for yourself through the power of your own will I know I return to uh, Nietzsche a lot of these videos, but it's just because I'm a philosopher and I need to read more philosophy. I've been trying to uh, digest Deleuze and Qatari a lot more recently, but it's pretty heavy going stuff, so mixed luck with that. Though I do like him in terms of the Polish modernists, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I must have almost spoken for 20 minutes now. I don't know how much I'm working the yard about bollocks. About philosophy and time. It's Donnie Darker, of course. Uh, which I'm sure most people watching this video would have seen. Donnie Darker where alternate timeline. Kind of a Christ metaphor, I think, in a lot of ways. That Donnie Darko is a schizophrenic, kind of messed up teenager, adolescent. Uh, very gifted, but very uh, difficult and at odds of the world. Which is relatable. And um, he um, starts seeing this bunny rabbit who tells him the world's going to end. And a plane, part of a plane, crashes into his bedroom. Lots of crazy shit happens after that. The philosophy of time travel, Robert Swan, Celador, yada yada. All these references will make sense if you've seen Donnie Darko, basically. 
Uh, so that's quite an interesting field to check out. On time in the future, I suppose. So, uh, it's done a kind of interesting. What if we had the, the thought experiment? Of course, what if we had the ability to. And this sort of touched upon a dollar yard to actually. What if we had the ability to see our own future manifest? The contradiction in that, of course, is that you could then choose to change your future. So that's obviously this question of free will. Is if you could have the ability to start and look into a, a glass ball and see, well, this is what your future is going to be. You then have the choice to be able to change it in some way, make a different decision to change it. And uh, science fiction, of course, has explored this for well years, pretty much. In decades, even more so. Philip K. Dick certainly did. With memory, yeah. What is reality? But I'm not going to go down too much of Philip K. Dick route. Even though that might be quite interesting, Tom might do. Um, yeah. The future touched upon the idea of is every predetermined, which is a major question in philosophy, I suppose. Are we just a sort of organic algorithm that's just winding, you know, working out the equation until the end of the time, the future just reaches an infinite zero point and singularity is off into infinity and we just cease them and they may be coming back to the existence of a way. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to answer that question yet. Three past one on a Tuesday evening, but it's an interesting thought to consider, I suppose. Like, I feel like is probably an interesting author to look at as well in terms of future memory, how we kind of think of the future. Obviously, because he's a science fiction writer, but also because he's one of his primary primary parts of his writing is to do with memory, really, and how uh, a memory can lie to us and how reality can be a sham under the surface in some deep level and Vallis he talks about how which is a book he talks about how um, there's this fast active living intelligence system there's a man called Horse Lover Fat in that who has an experience of this god like entity basically it's all tied in Gnosticism like ancient Christianity kind of revelatory experience based Christianity I suppose and um, but it's also about the fallout from the kind of hippie generation as well. LSD culture kind of cannibalised itself in some ways. Psychedelic culture and all that stuff. Um, so I'm kind of going down some interesting roads here now. So I know I'm talking a lot of yabber in between, but it's good. A psychedelic culture. Whole. I don't want to go into that, but psychedelia in some ways, I suppose, is a way of breaking out of those conventional, I mean, psychedelia in the broader sense, where it would be art, surrealism, making music, electronic music, doing acid or hallucinogens, uh, psychedelic culture through video games, whatever, music, game, whatever, game loaded, smoke a bit of joint, any of those things. In those sort of states, you sort of suspend the normal rules of time and you see everything from a sort of perspective that's outside of time, depending on what you do. Um, I have a little experience with that, not a great deal, I'm not going to elaborate on it too much. But um, that is a sort of... Um, That's one of the ways that I suppose human be and you can do it through poetry, you can do it art, or you can do it through the transcendent Zen, I suppose. The Zen hen. Hench Zen. Sort of probably getting progressive more drunk. <laughs> Not a drunk really, I have some I've been in two cans. Anyway. 
don't know how long I've been talking for now. Probably 20 minutes coming up to. So I don't feel this one's been that funny really. I'm not I can't talk too loud. Because people are in the house sleep in this house, so I have to respect that. I don't want a future where my housemate comes in and goes, shut the fuck up. So I'll just philosophizing as quietly and moderately as I can do instead of you. So I think I'll leave this funny philosophy here. I've been Noah Vortex. This has been Philosophical Ramblings on What is Time? <laughs>